Hello, and welcome to The Prodigal Life. I'm Deacon Harold, and I'm joined by Nick and Ellen. And we are here to help you make a deeper, richer, more intimate connection between your faith and your everyday lived experience. Today, we have a really special guest with us. He is someone who uh, has taken the initiative to do some really amazing things for the church. And I can speak from firsthand experience that it has blessed my life, my wife's life, my household's life. And I'm really excited to see uh, where these discussions go with him um, and how it might bless your life at home or in the car or on a jog listening or watching. Ellen, mm -hmm. who are we talking to and what about? We have Steve Cunningham with us today, a massive warrior for Christ. He is the founder, president, like you said, he does everything for Janitor. Sense of Fidelium. Um, <laughs> he also has another show called The Resistance Podcast. He's very devout in his faith and wanting to help people, you know, with the spiritual warfare that we're combating on a daily basis, if not hourly basis. So we want to introduce, let him introduce himself and he's going to share his testimony. That's how we're going to get started. And so take it away, Steve. <laughs> well, thank uh, <laughs> Nick, yeah, Ellen, Deacon, uh, thank you for having me. Uh, happy to be here. Um, yeah, we're glad yeah. to have you. I'm not, so <laughs> tell us. I don't know about, how to handle the praise yet. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just be like, okay. <laughs> tell us about the beginning of Steve Cunningham. Yes. Uh, well, I, I, remember, I, I wasn't a, there when Mom and Dad. G-rated was show. <laughs> right. It's G-rated. It's actually very much not. You know, I, know, <laughs> I heard the question going. I don't know if I should answer that way or not. Yeah. <laughs> well, see, my mom and dad were looking at each other, yeah. and uh, <laughs> mom was looking real good that day. Oh, Lord <laughs> and all of a sudden, bam! Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I just you know grew up in the uh, grew up in a uh, family. My dad was a pro golfer in Florida, and uh, wow, yeah, he was in the mini tour in Florida for a while, and uh, uh, ended up getting a sales job and with AMF. So if you're familiar with bowling centers back in the day, oh AMF, yeah, mm -hmm. that's yep. right. God, I remember the, a the AMF. Wow, yeah, I remember so I was, being uh, a seventh and eighth grade bowling and league and seeing that AMF symbol everywhere. Wow, yeah. So you were kid. Yeah. What was your what was your score? So I was I was having a two hundred average at least bowling when I was wow. twelve. So wow, I mean, that's really good. Okay. So yeah, we were in sports all our life. I, I remember, you know, uh, I tell my wife now because we're trying to think about getting our soon to be five year old in the sports, and I go, uh, well, yeah, I don't remember playing t ball till I was five, I think, and but yeah, we played literally. Dad was, you know, we we were Tiger Woods before there was Tiger. We you know we saw Tiger with the little sticks. We were doing yeah. that. I mean, we were beating up. We were beating guys five to eight years older than us in all sports we could think of, and that was it. That was the life. Uh, Mom uh, was, you know, making us pray. Dad then. Dad wasn't religious at all. He's, he grew up Presbyterian, but we'd go say a rosary. Mom would bring us upstairs and take us upstairs, and then we'd go downstairs and watch baseball with Dad on the on the couch or something. And Cardinal, he was mm -hmm. from St. Louis, so. We were St. Louis fans, and mom was from Cincinnati, so we were St. Louis, Cincinnati and St. Louis fans. And so I remember the '89 Super Bowl when Joe Montana broke my heart as a kid, and, uh, with the bang uh, beating the Bengals. And now I'm a Carolina Panther uh, big time fan because they moved in. I grew up in Spartanburg, and um, but yeah, but you, as you noticed, uh, I was a sports fan, and that's the only thing I cared about. I remember going to mass, and the only sermon I heard, which is funny, this the channel's all about sermons, is. Uh, a Mike Dicka sermon because uh, I was going to sleep. I remember being in the back of a gym because uh, for 20 years we didn't have a church. We were it, we did have one, but it, they didn't use it. They used they put us in a gym. So when they got a new church, they they had to teach people how to kneel again. This was a couple years ago, and uh, I was sitting in the back and I'm in a cut off shirt and shorts and you know. <laughs> Just bad. I mean, I remember the. I remember a father coming up to my brother and I, and looking at me, and go no, and going to the next person, to ask about doing the like, my shirt or something. <laughs> and uh, but yeah, the only sermon I remember is him talking about Dicka once, and uh, it was just it wasn't on. It didn't care. Mom, even though mom took us to adoration, we went to Catholic school. The nuns were there. The Ursuline nuns were still there at the time. Mm. Uh, honestly, you put a gun in my head. I couldn't tell you what I learned and. You know, school yeah. or I remember adoration though. I do remember those things and mom bringing us to mass and the uh, saying rosaries upstairs in the room and things like that. But yep, a hundred percent of the time was, it was sports, sports, sports. I mean, we went to school for sports. That's the only reason I went to high school, play ball. Uh, only reason I went to college, play ball. Uh, so 
Uh, now, you know, people talk about penance. We're in Lent right now. Uh, that was the, ascet the asceticism that I did was, I mean, I wish someone would taught me how to eat right. We might have been in, might have made pro, but I'd probably be in hell right now, though. But, but, <laughs> wow. uh, but I practiced eight hours a day, six to eight hours a day. Sometimes I wouldn't eat, just keep going. Uh, work out, not knowing what I'm doing, but just doing it. Uh, finding the best to play with and try to beat them at anything or, you know, get on a team. Not I got on College of Charleston's baseball team and didn't even play, pick up a baseball in three years. Co coach never even saw me. Just thought I was left-handed, so I decided to throw a ball against the wall for about uh, six months, eight hours a day to get my arm ready to throw. Uh, so this, you know, whatever needed to be done for a ball, it was going to happen. Mm -hmm. Shooting baskets, I remember, just, just three-pointers. I made 500. It wasn't shooting 500. I didn't lead to I made 500. And then that's not including inside the arc, and that's not including free throws. Um, wow. So it's I got this, I guess, obsessive. Uh, uh, my mom always said that if, if my if, if anything I was going to do, I was going to – there was nothing going to stop me from doing it. But if I didn't want to do it, it wasn't going to happen. And you, know, you see the work ethic from that into this because – now I'm posting about 15 videos of, uh, every two days. I mean, literally, it's six a day. Uh, uh, yep. Recording Dom Garanger, uh going through the second time of it. And 16 projects in my mind that I want to do that I just got to prioritize and execute using Jocko Willick's uh, teachings on uh, ownership. Oh, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. I, lo I love those. I love Willick. My dad was a Marine. Uh, all my coaches were Marine types. Uh, mm -hmm. I loved, if everybody remembers Indiana University, I remember Bob Huggins. Uh, Bob, I mean, I just went stupid. Bobby Knight. Bob Knight, Bobby Knight. Yeah. I wanted to play for Bobby Knight. Everyone else thought I was crazy. I wanted that. I was all my, co I wanted somebody to push me harder, you know, not tell me how good I am. Uh, underneath my baseball, I had a USC Aiken. Uh, I had a, I had a phrase, you suck. Because everyone else thought they were the 26 Yankees. And I'm there going, you know, guys, we're on USC Aiken. We're not that good. But the motivation to keep me going, to do something better. And the same thing here. Uh, it's a litany, litany of humility. One of the last ones is make someone a holier, holier than else. Make, make sure you get as holy as you should. And Amen. Right, just to, not to, I mean, Tim Staples really, he really ticked me off uh, in a good way. <laughs> uh, no, I was coming back into the church, and my brother takes me to this uh, conference in Chapin, South Carolina, and it's Tim Staples. And I saw him, he was reverting uh, back and, I see this guy and he's he's spewing off all the things that we should know. And I go, this guy just came in. We're we're supposed to we were we're the natives, and he knows more than us. I was mad about that. I was like, I want to know more mm -hmm. than him because he's the, he's the new guy and uh, new kid on the block. And, mm -hmm. you know, so it's stuff like that. It's you know you like you know pictures of Larry. You you mentioned the photos. I had growing up. That was Larry Bird. That was Magic. That was you know <laughs> Pete Rose. Yeah. That was Boomer Esiason. You know, my room was the Hall of Famers that I grew up watching. And now it's the Hall of Famers that we want to emulate. And uh, yeah. everything's connected. I mean, uh, you just, John, John Climacus laddered Divine Ascent up there. It's, that changed me seven years ago during Lent. I remember reading it. I'm still reading it. Um, but, no, it's just one of those things. I never would have thought. If you would have told, told myself about 10 years ago, 15 years ago, I was going to be doing this. I would have laughed you out of the room. It's, uh, and so went to so how did he get you? So how did he get you? How did God get you to come back? I was my brother actually telling, you know, putting a foot on my butt one time. Uh, <laughs> how uncomfortable. Yeah, no, no. It's, it was the way it was because they, he would, I mean, we were back in, all right, we get into college. Uh, we, yeah, I start, we started getting into the party atmosphere late in college. We were goody, good old boys for the first couple of years. Then we went away to Charleston and, I, I found the dark side of uh, partying and had a good time with it. And, uh, was, you know, just, you know, making cake stand records because they thought that was cool. I was like, yeah, it's no big of a deal. You just figure out how to do it. Uh, you know, and then that transferred into USC Aiken and I crafted my brother a little bit more in there doing that. And, and then we got into <laughs> Columbia. I went to Columbia, South Carolina. He went to Athens and I was leading the party atmosphere in Columbia to the point that I was getting invited to grand openings, soft openings, and sitting next to Steve Spurrier in my workout gear because they knew me as the trainer at the Hampton Hill Athletic Club. I was, it was the only, it was the main one there. Uh, you know, you had Globo gyms like, you know, Golds and all this, but these guys are local guys. Everybody knew them. It was a rich family, and I was the main main uh, trainer there. 
so they would invite me in and they knew I knew how to party. So I was going to be a life of the life of the room. And yeah, Steve Spurrier sitting next to me and people are like, you're sitting next to Coach Spurrier. I go, yeah, so what to do? Hey, coach, how you doing? And you go back, you know, I was an air, almost, have you ever seen suits? I was hair, I was, I was, you know, yeah, I was uh, arrogant, you knew what, you know, everyone knows me, you know, walking anywhere I wanted to go. Um, it's just one of those things. And then my brother, uh, he moves up, he goes up to uh, uh, Kentucky to play uh, inter- independent league ball for a couple weeks. And then uh, we start, people, people would see us post on Facebook, um, try to make fun of each, not fun of each other, but make each other laugh. And that was it. I would post something to make him laugh. He would do something to make me laugh. And then I get a job working with a friend of his in medical sales. He calls me up and says, hey, you know, this is during the 1998, you know, economy's kind of starting to tank a little bit. I'm working in the gym going, you know, I could be axed right now because, you know, people's money, is, I'm, I'm not the main important thing. They could take the, you know, $40 away anytime they want. So I got into medical sales through him, just helping a guy out, putting braces on people and maybe change my ways of thinking, all right, let me listen to talk radio because I come out of college, gun grabber, let's nuke uh, the Middle East into a into a piece of glass and turn it into a parking lot. Um, <laughs> oh ball my gosh. You know, just what I was a whack at you. You know, George Bush, I'm going to vote for him because he owned the Rangers. I'm going to vote for Obama because he was on the, he, he did a, you know, a field of 64 bracket. That was my mentality. Um uh, and then I started listening to talk radio, and then he started uh, getting into medical anyways. I saw what was coming down with the Obamacare uh, bills coming in, and we got the HSS letters all the time, take this product off the shelf. And I was asking questions, what happens if they do become a single parent and things like this? And I was take, taking all that info I was getting and changing the way I was posting and putting that stuff up. And so he saw that I was doing state-related things. Now I got Clown Planet News, and I'm doing News from the Pew, and I'm doing two news shows a week. Uh, and then he sees that and he goes, I'm going to maybe post about Saint of the Days uh, for a week of, for Lent. And so mm-hmm. at the end of Lent, he started thinking he may have a, a call-in. So he, and, I mean, that story itself is you got to get him on to talk about that. I mean, my mom doesn't know how to work a toaster sometimes. I mean, technology is not her forte. And she was able to, I mean, literally, I would have to call her to talk her through how to DVR something. Like step one, turn the TV on. I mean, step two. <laughs> <laughs> hit that button. And then all of a sudden she ended up recording because my brother went out to say, you know, go for adoration. Where do you want me to go? And she opens the door at 12 o'clock at night, which she's usually bed by nine. I just recorded this for you. You had to go watch it. It was our lady Guadalupe seminary in Dennett. And he goes, okay, <laughs> that's, you know, for you have to be there to be able to figure out how, you know, how nutty that was at that time. And uh, he texts me up. He goes, ignorance of scripture, ignorance of Christ. After I just got let go from uh, medical sales, I'm thinking, I'm going to get I'm gonna get my own gig here soon. I'm good enough. I'm going to get my own territory. It's no big deal. Months later, it goes by. I don't get it. I'm about to go to work at Time Warner Cable being the guy that you call up on the phone and complain about your cable bills. And he texts mm-hmm. me up, ignorance of scripture, ignorance of Christ. I go, all right, I'll give it a shot. And uh, that was the first week, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Monday, mo- Monday Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday responded back what else i didn't know about the saint mary magdalene had some reason that kicked in my mind seven demons in her i had no clue about that it stuck out for some reason and then then that led to uh catholic answers led to bishop barons he was on EW, he was on wgn at the time uh the ewtn shows uh uh world's first love by full and shame was the first catholic book really i had and and it just, there was a parish down the street, St. Joseph's in Columbia. And I would go there and go daily mass there, stay there for a little bit after because I would have to go to work at 12. So just get up, work out in the, in the living room, go to mass, come back, then go over there and sit there and take calls for nine hours and eat a, eat a cold subway sub. And while I'm doing that, I'm reading, you know, uh, books, uh, just all kinds of Catholic books at the time. And, which is funny because my supervisor out there was illiterate and he hated people to read. So he, I would get DMs, stop reading. While the people across from me were watching ESPN Sports Center or uh, Gangster Rap was playing or things like that. I'm going, I, I can't read this book, but they could play that. And, um, ended up leaving that, but it's one of those. I just couldn't stop putting books. I was doing apologetics in between calls. I mean, you know, the whole Staples thing happened during that, during that, uh, that tenure at Time Warner. And I'm, 
I'm seeing a, I'm seeing somebody post something and go, oh no, I got this one. And I got his, uh, you know, nuts and bolts book, uh, that he put out. And I had that thing memorized and, uh, just couldn't get enough of it. So it goes back to the, you know, I remember a coach back in the day saying, who's going to, you know, who's, whoever is the best practice is going to start the next day. And so I learned Tim, Tim Hardaway's crossover, like, I mean, overnight. And I used that. I was killing everybody. But the next game, it was six nothing me and I get benched. Uh, it was just politics of the high school. So anything like that, if I found my, my mind was set on it, I'm going to learn it. So I was determined to learn the faith at that time. And it just kept digging and digging and digging and gold and gold and gold. And, and then the Chris Theros movie comes out and mm. I, I'm working out, I'm working out the house, uh, working at at t now and uh, thinking in the cubicle, man, am I a communist? <laughs> I hate this job. You ever, you ever sold, you ever, you ever have, do you have a Yellow Pages book? I was selling ads for a book that nobody uses. This is the mm. toughest sales job I've ever had in my life. And I was supposed to go out there and get people that having, uh, you know, just getting their business started and tell them, hey, give me $200 a month to put you in a book that no one reads. And I was trying to <laughs> put that on my mind. I go, I can't, I can't do it. I can't. Well, they give me an excuse back and I couldn't retaliate about that. And usually I'm good at it. It was no, that objection I could not go over. And then I'm sitting there going, I would go to adoration in between on my break. And what am I doing here? And then, all right, mm-hmm. let me just quit this, go back home and reboot. And then Chris Theros movie comes out. And I'm thinking, I'm, I'm watching, when I'm working out at this house, I'm watching these sermons on YouTube. I, there's about six of them at the time. And well, well, that's cool. I can watch this while I'm doing this. So when I get back home and I'm thinking, they, they got these videos out there. And I'm a Knight of Columbus. And uh, we're trying to think of how to how to get the uh, movie out there more, and I go to see the show with my brother and a friend of ours that died a couple months ago, a couple years ago, and he was. I had two friends when I was a trainer. Both were one was five hundred pounds, the other was four hundred pounds. I'm going, you guys are terrible advertising for me, but they, I loved him to death. And so he ended up dying a couple years ago after returning to the faith. Thanks be to God, we were one of those. We were jacking him up too, and uh, he went to the movie with us. And we go, there's five people there. Us three and two people that knew Moses. And we're going, really? <laughs> <laughs> and no one else knew, no one else was there. And it was there for one day. And I think that was it. And uh, so I go, For Greater right, Glory? Is that the movie? Uh, the movie. For, yeah, greater, that, for, the movie, greater, yeah, for greater Glory. And I remember movie. Father had a sermon on the on this, on this this series. And uh, I was like, all right, let me put that thing together. Maybe I could. <laughs> I'm thinking. Here I am. I'm going to get that video out. Millions of people are going to see it and go watch the movie. I'm like, cuckoo. And uh, but that was the first video. It took me uh, six beers to figure out how to do it because I was texting <laughs> all the people. Up. I, I'm texting largely. People go, how how do you do this? And I go, I had no clue. I'm still using the same uh, uh, product that from what I did that day. It's called Movie Maker, Microsoft Movie Maker. It's free. And when I tell people about it, they laugh. I go, really? You're doing that? I go, yeah, it's just simple. I, I, I don't know how to do this stuff. I, they send me a link. Of the, yeah, to try this other link. I go, look at it. It's like German to me. Uh, I carry the laptop with me, and they go, I go what's what's with that? I go, you're a fan of the channel, right? He goes, yeah, that's the channel. He goes, you're kidding me. It's on a laptop? I go, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I put the video together. It took about, you know, I mean, I didn't know you could extend the the, the, the pictures. So I had like, you know, Thousands of photos in, like five second clips, blurry. Uh, most of it's a silhouette of a priest. Uh, it's it was bad, and I actually had obviously I redid it since. But and then after that, I, I had these CDs that I got from a guy that was doing the doing the website, and I was listening to him in the car, and I would just plug him in. If I was driving, I was doing sales still, and I would drive around and where I was looking for jobs at the time because that was the main thing, you know. Uh, Nick brought up about how glorious I did, you know, started, the, you know, glorious in, their, in uh, the the start of it was so great. Actually, I was unemployed. I was trying to figure out what to do. And I figured that video would be a good way to do it. Then I heard another sermon go, wait, I did that with the Cristeros one. I didn't know about that. Maybe I'll put that up on the channel too, to help somebody else out. And that was really the gist. If I learned anything from a sermon, I would just put it up on the channel. Mm-hmm. And what well, we had, 12, 13 years later, I'm still learning, <laughs> still finding out. There was one sermon I remember, uh, and I, I listened to it. It's St. Therese, uh, Therese going around a, 
a cab and it was about the they had an accident in their in their in their trolley or whatever and she's praying to saint joseph to help him out and back my mind it was a cool ser sermon but i didn't think it was worth it i was like i ah, forget about it i'll put it up anyways seven minutes long it was a hit i go stop it i'm not thinking just gonna do it just gonna put it up yeah. somebody's gonna love it um mm -hmm. and it's it's just one of those things yeah, was, like i said it's just uh 15 years ago it was you know on top of bars pouring drinks in people's mouths and you know <laughs> and, and, and a, a How'd you come up with the name for the apostolate? Well, at first it was called uh, Video Sancto because I have no uh, creativity whatsoever, and the other side was <laughs> Audio Sancto. And I'm thinking, why well, don't we just keep this under the umbrella of Sancto? And um, there was a fallout between him and I, and uh, so I changed the name to Census Fidelium because I literally did a keyword search. And I said, what kind of name I could change this thing to? So they're, they're, they're typing in, yeah, says Fidel. That sounds good. I don't know what this means. I was says Fidel. That works. Everyone thought it was cool, uh, and now <laughs> it, it stuck. Uh, obviously, I learned since then what it meant, but uh, that was really it. It wasn't uh, wasn't some glorious thing. I went to uh, Mount Athens <laughs> or anything like that to figure it out, and got an Abby to Abby to tell me you should name this. Since well, you know what, Steve? I wouldn't. I wouldn't presume to be so bold as to say that the Holy Spirit wasn't working there. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> he had to be because if I forget what day it is. So uh, when uh, people ask me something and I start spouting stuff up and you know do a lecture on Garanger or a Holy Face or things like that, and people are like, "Wow, that was amazing!" I go, <laughs> "Talk to him." I, I forgot what is today? Tuesday, Thursday? What? Is, I have to really look at it. Going, oh man, I forgot what day. I forgot to eat. <laughs> but yeah, I can <laughs> and you referenced some other um, projects that you're involved in um, that they become come to life. Like I think I think it's Clown World, Clown World Clown News, and then you've got From the Pew, and then you've got the Resistance Podcast. How did they fall in after you established, you know, the sense of fidelium? Well, the uh, Resistance idea. That was my wife. We were. She was telling me the. She pushed me to get the website, the dot com site, and mm. so I got that. You can you can thank her for all the good stuff. It's there's a, a line from Bruce Almighty. Where, where behind every great man is a, a woman rolling her eyes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that's probably her. Uh, so she got the dot com thing together. Busted. There's eleven thousand links on that thing. Um, mm. Yeah, four languages, eleven thousand links. Wow. And uh, she said, "You have to do podcasts." I said. Oh, no. Why would I do that? And I'm just because I'm just doing the sermons thing. It's like but no one wants to hear me. And uh, so the first one, actually, a buddy of mine wanted me to do a news show for him, and he sent me all the equipment, which I still have, and I still to this day don't know how to work. And uh, <laughs> it's microphone stuff. It's I you know I think it's cool, but I have to take a photo of it when I move somewhere, just so I put it back exactly how it is. And uh, so it's, instead of ask, I was asking friends uh, to do interviews of these people on these topics. And then I would, after they did it, I would put them together in a video for them. And I, then they start, they didn't start, you know, doing it anymore. I was, I was asking, hey, you had to do this. And they wanted to do the spicy clickbait stuff. And I didn't care about that stuff. I wanted to keep it piety. Because like when I was putting the, the website together, I was right, I met with some of the redemptorists in Scotland. They were in town mm -hmm. and hanging out with Father R one day and, I was talking to Father Jean uh, Jean Pierre, and he said, "You know, we do the mags. They do the Catholic magazine, uh, the Catholic." And he goes, "It's straight piety." I go, "All right, that will be the site. I don't know what I'm putting on there, but it will be straight piety." You know, I'm going. What am I going to do? Put the video on the website? I'm still trying to figure this out. So then I started doing Resistance podcast because I'm a big John Connor fan and Terminator. And even though uh, Salvation, the movie Terminator Salvation, wasn't that great, there were some cool scenes in it. So he's, I ended up getting, I played her the clip. I go, this is going to be the opening. And it's, you hear John Connor in it, and you know, we've been fighting a long time. She goes, that's awesome. I go, I know. That's why I want to start out with it. And then I put the Avengers theme song behind it, so you get the doom doom behind it. So you can't play one without the other. You get back, you get nukes from uh, YouTube. But if you put combine them, the two, it screws up their AI. <laughs> <laughs> and then I started going, well, let's do these topics. Let's talk about this. And I, I literally just reached out to Ignatius Press going, is there a way to get Cardinal Sarah on to talk about his book, Silence? Because everyone wants to talk about these other books, but eh. I'm hearing, you know, John Klein, Father Abernathy's doing these podcasts on Cassian and Climacus and talking about mm -hmm. silence, getting the silence is the language of heaven. And 
we're all you know griping and complaining about this, that, and then the other. I'm going. I'm I'm trying to do the opposite of these guys. So mm-hmm. I'm looking at solutions. So like I just did a solution show on Spiritus TV, the alternative Catholic uh, YouTube channel. Uh, alternative guys. I got small business guys on the cha- on the website that I'm trying to promote. These guys, a lot of guys are going with help my my pillow because you know I don't care about the my pillow guy. I care about this this mom and Joe and. Up in, I think it's Idaho, Montana. They got their own pillow company. I'm gonna help that guy, and they're Catholic. So I got all these little Catholic guys. So I'm trying to get these little guys that have better knowledge than most of these big dogs. And the big dogs are just losing their minds right now. I'm going. Let's stick with piety. Don't want to go left or right. Obviously, stay down the middle on this thing. Yes, I don't agree with a lot of things going on, but I'm not. You know, it's you got to keep the joy. No one's talking about joy. I got guys talking about joy. Uh, mm-hmm. So it's one of those things. I want to. It's in high school, we weren't the most conforming people in the world. Uh, everyone Imagine loved Dave. That. Yeah, everybody loved Dave Matthews Band at the time, and we would get up and say, "I hate Dave Matthews," and the whole cafeteria <laughs> would go, "Screw!" That was us. I mean, you know, if you were doing this, I'm gonna do it the other way. If you hate this, I'm gonna go the other way. Um, so, really, it's one of those when I see people, especially on like Twitter and things like that, I just it turns me off, and I want to mm-hmm. help the little guy out. It makes me want to get in, dig, dig in deeper instead of running away to infiltrate. Like I just got this, like uh, an interview with the, the Diocese of Charleston. I call that real infiltrating. I got into them, but the whole the whole idea, the premise with it was to get into the magazine, to get other people that have never seen the channel to hear about it and get them to come to it. And I can't do that if I'm just talking to the choir all the time about this thing's, this thing's, this thing's, this thing's. No, I'm trying to get out there and bring people in. Mm-hmm. And that's all the rest of the resistance is resisting the, you know, the world of flesh and devil and just the temptation to be, you know, and I tell all my friends, if you, if I start getting a big head, come to my house and kick my butt. Um, <laughs> so can, if you, if you call me and I don't call you back and I think I'm too good for you, resist, resisting those temptations and uh, the vices mm-hmm. like that. So uh, I'm not wow. you know, using the resistance in different ways right now that I'm resisting that resistance. Yeah. So would you and say that the resistance too, podcast has like a political dynamic to it? Is that kind of where it goes or is it more religious? Yeah. The, well, you know, the, whatever I could bring up in a cloud plan is more of a political stuff. It's okay. like, that's what put me back in is politics in general. I ran for a South Carolina state house seat back in 2010. And it's always one of those things I want to, if I'm going to talk the talk, I want to be able to do it too and be able to look at my kids and say, at least did something. I tried. And the cloud plan idea was, uh, I saw a lot of people, you know, talking about things. This is during the uh, the thing that went down three years ago that I will not say so that we don't get booted. And uh, <laughs> so I put on a, a alternative platforms, but bring out the news that was coming out that other people aren't watching because mm-hmm. I like right. watching particular folks and digging into the yeah. news thing, getting the reports, Fine not planning. the person to come out with it, but getting it right and then getting that info out there. And so that was the whole jest on mm-hmm. that. Here's the info that you're not getting that's out there that you might not be seeing if you just watch talking heads on state approved media. And, you know, here, here's the links. And I it's used from secular guys that gave me the ideas. Here's the links. You can call me crazy. Here's the story. Yeah. <laughs> I'm looking at the Clown try. Planet YouTube channel right now. You're that's doing great. really well. You have, you know, 212,000 subscribers, right. 3.3 3, thousand videos. Mm-hmm. Do you do you sleep? Because this he is just one of your three projects. He posts six videos <laughs> a day. That's insane. Like, this this that's is who he is. Question, uh, I go to bed usually around one o'clock anymore and get up at six. <laughs> that's right. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, I think you and I have similar sleeping patterns. And I'm then just you not have putting the, out six videos a day. That's crazy. And then you have news from the pew, which I love. I love that. That is great. Yeah, yeah. No, it's, it's again, again. It starts with the uh, Corbett Report. They have a show called uh, "New World News." New World this week, and I've a buddy of mine. We we watch that all the time, and I wanted to do a Catholic version of that. And mm-hmm. ended up getting, I did it. I started it before, and it went way off the rails. So I had to reboot it. Um, <laughs> and uh, so that's that's what that is. It's just get again. Yeah. Let's talk about the news in a Catholic sense. And I told the guys I want to talk about virtue bring scripture in on it and you yep. know the guys like i reached out to are great for is the virtue hound he runs the holy 40 project jonathan fluent in seven different languages and he knows scripture study he taught the seminarians as a seminarian uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> oh wow 
Yeah, he would be a priest, but he has uh, epilepsy, so he can't, you know, obviously that's uh, uh, infringement on things. So he knows patristics like the back of his head. So I was like, he's my guy. We got to get him. And they were asking me, hey, we don't know the news like you. I said, I don't want you to. You hear what we're saying and you bring in your strengths. So everyone works together in, you know, a bond in a sense. So that was the whole idea to get those things out there because a lot of people just talk about how bad Roman is. <laughs> and like, oh, how tiring. I was, all right, all right, wake up. It's like Groundhog Day. All right, Rome stinks again. Great. Right, we know. We, we played. Here's that horse. It's dead. Let's beat him down some more. So, yeah. I would say that your work ethic, as far as, because I mean, obviously, sports was your God. You know what I mean? I mean, we all have, in, in my story, I mean, I was, I was a sports junkie too. So, like, I get it. So um, I graduated high school. I had 11 varsity letters. So like I played every sport, every season, if I could do it. So I completely understand what you're saying by that. But I, I didn't do the six hour, eight hour thing working out. If I had, I probably would have been better than I was. But I would say that definitely your work ethic with regard to your sports, it, it's like God just rechanneled it mm. into what he wanted from you. You know what I mean? And you, by the grace of God, you said yes. And that, that is beautiful that, you know what I mean? Because I'm sure you still love sports. I mean, you know what I mean? I still love sports. But, like, now my passion is, you know, trying to evangelize and, you know, do do God's work. You know what I mean? Be, be fruitful in his vineyard. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's what I see with you. And I'm really grateful that you did it. Praise the Lord that you, that God and the Holy Spirit worked their magic through right. sports. <laughs> it yeah. started with sports. And what's interesting about that, too, is, like, sports is not, inherently a bad thing sports mm -hmm. is actually a very good thing you know the, the striving for excellence um even that spirit of competition can be virtuous if mm -hmm. channeled correctly uh and you know it's one of those things that where you're at now in your life in your faith uh, and anyone else that might relate to this because there, there's so many different things like for me music was my idol and fame and glory was my idol and mm. i had to step away from music for a while and, and now i'm back into music because yeah. i can do it virtuously mm -hmm. god willing um you know, and you were talking about uh, Jocko, you made a reference to Jocko earlier. And, mm -hmm. and you know, he's someone that he, he's obviously secular. Um, but he, am, am I right in saying that? I'm pretty sure he is. Yeah, yeah he comes from a secular, he's Christian of some yeah. flavor. But you can still, even from a Catholic standpoint, you can still go to someone like Jocko and get a lot out of what he has to say in terms of us, again, striving for excellence and, and trying to be the best versions of ourselves. His, his view on that is limited, right? It's similar to if we're following sports and, and we're, we're following athletes and coaches and stuff like there, there are, there's going to be some tidbits of virtue that we have to gain by following these people. But we have to also like limit that to what their, what their limitations are, right? And, and not let it go beyond that. Um, because we can end up finding ourselves idolizing people and, and then kind of taking to the bank too much of what they say. Um, mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I think that where you're at is super cool because like Ellen's saying, like you're, you're the, the work ethic and everything, like how little you sleep and how much you output, um, like God is using that clearly. Um, and and it's, it's, it's really awesome to see that for sure. Uh, I was also thinking you should check out, you might enjoy this. We have a show at Awakened Catholic called Physically Spiritual that is hosted by Andrew Reinhardt. And I, for some time, have, have considered Andrew Reinhardt to kind of be the Catholic Jocko, minus, like, he's never been in the military or anything, but, like, mm -hmm. in terms of a lot of the science uh, and, like, uh, j there, you, there's a lot that I think you might enjoy if you're into Jocko, mm -hmm. physically spiritual. Yep. Yeah, I'll check yeah, it out. What yeah, I appreciate I'll... about what you're doing is just, you're just a regular guy. Yeah. yeah. Right? I mean, so many people uh, have ideas. They want to do things. They want to try and do something. But I don't have advanced degrees in theology, or I don't speak Greek, or I don't do that. I'm like, just be you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> don't don't try to be like this person, that person. Use what God has given you, and if you feel called to do something, just do it. Amen. Yeah. So, you know, and, and that's that's why I love about you the the beautiful simplicity of what you're doing, but it's making an impact because mm -hmm. you're not trying to be anybody other than yourself. Amen. Yeah, you would figure out real quick if I was trying to pretend to be someone else. I, I'm <laughs> terrible. <laughs> wow. when, I, when, I, when I was unemployed, that's all I did was read and listen to these podcasts, listen to these sermons, listen to Catholic Answers. And if Father told you to read a book, I would find that book and start reading it. It was like I had the time, still trying to look for work. But so, yeah, I didn't go to seminary. I didn't go to any of those things. So I went to the School of Hard Knocks and listened to 
listen to what the priest the priests were telling you to do. So I just read those saints. I got Saint Alph- every Saint Alphonsus book over there. I just read them all. I just read Saint Francis. And Dad always said wow. to you know read the uh, read like I was big basketball. Read Larry Bird's story. I have the book still. So mm-hmm. read the stories of the guys that played ball and Hardaway and Magic and Jordan and Rose and all those guys. Be like them. You read them, and then that's basically I carry that over to the faith ones. I read those guys now. That's awesome. Amen. And if I, I'll, I'll be remiss if I don't ask this question because the followers who know who you are are going to be, why didn't she ask that? How did you come to work with Father Ripminger? Because I lost a bet. And, uh, no, I lost no, no, a bet. No, <laughs> <laughs> uh, <clears throat> no, well, Let me guess. You were possessed and he was your exorcist. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. <laughs> No, there was a, there was a time when uh, there was a group of laymen that tried to cut uh, slam the channel down. It was back mm. in two thousand six, and I I I ran and I, I met Ryan, not Ryan, I met Ryan. I've been contacting Ryan for a while, and uh, he was always asking me, "Why do you help me?" I go, "Because I know how to put a good product out there, and what it means when no one else is helping you." So I like doing that with a you got a good product, you're terrible at marketing, let me help you out. And that's trans 101. We put a site up there. We think everyone's just going to show up to it. We don't tell anybody it exists. And I'm like, I like showing that. So him and I became friends. So I was helping him, getting his stuff promoted and all this. I didn't know he was BFS with Father R. And then when all this stuff went down at this parish, I immediately contacted him and a couple other people, mainly him. I said, what can we do about this? And mm-hmm. he was able to contact. He knew the other priests, too. And they all, it was a blessing in disguise. They all bombarded me with texts or emails saying, we got your back. Keep doing what you're doing. You have our blessing. I'm like, perfect. And he said, Father Ark can stand up and do a video for you if you want, saying he's back. he'll back you up. I said, don't have to. Wow. No big deal. And I still haven't talked to him, but he, I knew he, he was on his radar now. Because I always wonder, what would these guys think of me? And, uh, <laughs> and I go out to Denver, move out to Denver, and uh, Ryan come, we bring Ryan down to do a lecture. He goes, so Father Ark wants to meet you at his place. I said, okay, sure, no problem. So we go up there and uh, that was it. And we just started shooting the breeze and just, you know, hanging out, having a drink, smoking one up and uh, hang out there for a couple hours. And then it was probably about 12 o'clock at night before I leave her home going, guys, I got an hour drive down here. And I do Uber and I get up in three to start driving strangers around to pay the bills. So I need to roll. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, so, yeah, it's uh, it was one of those things. We just ever since then, we've been, you know, we'll. He has a good, is a big circle of friends that he texts to, but uh, yeah, we chat a lot and talk about things that are going on or uh, spitball ideas at each other or, you know, hey, what do you think about doing this? We, you know, I try to help, you know, get the promotions out for his books and things like that. So yeah, we talk a lot, but uh, it's, it's okay. usually memes to each other and he's a big meme. <laughs> So. He's a memer. Oh, okay. That's amazing. <laughs> Father R is a memer. I like that. He's That's a good, good way to go out on this. <laughs> He's got All right, a good sense of humor. That's hilarious. Well, thank you for sharing your testimony, Steve. It's great. So how can our supporters and fans and viewers find you? Like, what are the best ways for them to get in contact with you to support your work and what you're doing? I, I immediately started thinking of Blippi. Type my name. B-L-I- no, censusfidelium.com. <laughs> uh, type it out. How, you learn how to spell it. Uh, but it's censusfidelium.com is the website. And I actually just found out after about six years, I have a website that I can put feature videos out there. So I update the front page daily with same oh, of the nice. day sermons or like today, Thursday after Ash Wednesday sermons. So every day I'm trying to upload that. So that's the main way you can go to everywhere after that. And uh, just click the about. It has all the plat- platforms I'm on. I think I'm on like eight. Um, nice. Including YouTube. So just type in Sus Fidel and you can do it on Google and you'll find it. So it's uh, it'll be it's hard not to find anymore. But SusFidelium.com is the main web page. Awesome. Well, thank you very much for sharing your story. We really would like you to join us and get the Awaken app on your phone. You can get it at your Apple Apple Store or your Google Play Store or even online. If you want That's to just right. follow browser. us online on yeah. the browser, on YouTube, I and mean, we're everywhere. So you can do that and we would like it. And then Deacon's going to tell you how you can support us because this does not happen for free. <laughs> just go to theprodigallife.com and there you will see different levels of giving that you can uh, use to support the show. And we've tied those to the different levels of angels, right? So you can become an angel investor, if you will, in the prodigal life. All right. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Come back. God bless you all. <laughs>